Hi guys, welcome back to It's Not Cooking Podcast. Again, it's been a minute. I know, I'm doing stuff. Leave me alone. Um, I just got back from vacation also, not too long ago, so I'm still finally getting out of vacation mode. Um, my birthday, fantastic. Birthday trip, fantastic. At the time of my life, I got to see Usher. <laughs> I got to see Usher. It was amazing. Um, but anyway, if you're new, welcome. If you're old, welcome back. We got a doozy today. So today's topic is one that I've been trying to steer away from, but the idea of the podcast was to be open and honest and as truth to my life as possible. So today we're talking about life after divorce, which is insane to begin with. But anyway, um, as you know, I was married at 25. Um, we broke up a year later. Um, we didn't really make it to the two to three to four. Um, there was a lot of, there was a lot of first year issues that happened that I didn't, uh, take into consideration when people were telling me the first year is going to be hard. I ignored that. I was like, we're going to be fine. Cause you know, we were fine before the actual marriage or we were scraping the surface of fine we were really young when we did this so neither one of us had an idea what it was to be a wife what it was to be a husband um the ups and the downs people do talk about the first year being the hardest but we had no examples of what that actually looked like and we also didn't have anybody to give us true real advice on how to fix what is breaking apart so yeah it was a lot of just it was just a lot of nonsense that happened for no reason um but i am divorced officially so it's kind of like it never happened and i kind of move like it never happened so yeah um but yeah so i do have a guest that is that went through the same thing and we're gonna you know talk about what happened in our marriages how it ended what's the process after and dating after being with somebody for so long so yeah stay tuned i always forget to say this for some reason but don't forget to like and subscribe and comment and share all of the podcast episodes <laughs> okay now to the show Okay, I have a special guest. Her name is Crystal. Hi, everybody. She's my cousin. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to tell us her story about her and her ex. Okay. <laughs> you had the floor. So I met my ex when I was 22 years old. We met on the train. We met on the train. I think it was like... It was the E train. Oh God! Um, it was around like eleven o'clock at night. It was so weird. Why are you on a train at eleven o'clock? Oh, I had a night. I had a job. Okay. I had a job <laughs> Fair enough. Fair in the enough. city, <laughs> and I didn't get home till late. I didn't get home till really late. Fair Mother enough. hated it. Um, and it was so cute because my father, my father was waiting outside the train for me to pick me up and take oh. me home. I know, right? I'm a little daddy's girl. Um, bald-headed daddy, spoiled daughters. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, he stopped me. Um, he, it was weird because we noticed each other on the train, but then he didn't really want to say anything. So I was just in my, my era and I was just dating guys, just, I was calling myself a serial day and I was dating guys. It was like two weeks on, two <laughs> weeks on, two weeks. I was getting real bored. So um, he met me like right before he stopped me, right before I was getting off the, um, the terminal. And he tapped me. He asked me what my name was. We exchanged numbers. Now, when we started talking, everything went fast, 
fast, fast. Mm -hmm. Mind you, he was like my first real, real relationship, especially out of college. So everything went like super fast. We talked on the phone all the time, spent most of my free time with him. That's the cute part of dating. It's so it's cute. The cute part. It's really cute because everything is fresh and new and you can't like get enough of each other and you just in each other's face all the time. That's the part I can't. And then it's out. no, <laughs> and then it's no space, and then you start realizing things that you usually normally did when you were single and you weren't attached. Mm -hmm. You kind of just forget all about that shit. It's just like it just kind of withers kinda away, feels. and because this was like my first real relationship, Done. I checked out of everything. Fair enough. Checked out of everything, Same. and then also. I didn't realize it, but it was a lot of love bombing involved, like straight. So I felt hard and I felt fast. Boom. Love bombing sucks. Yes. When you recognize it now, it's I like, recognize it now, but I did not recognize nobody it. Nobody knows love bombing. Yeah, nobody. It's no, not at 22. Not at 20. Hell no. No, 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 no. no. You don't know it. You want to meet my mom? Why? Well, yeah. I get to meet your mother. mother. You get to, you want to meet my brothers? Yes. Oh, long walks on. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We do. Yeah. Young and dumb. You must really love me. Well, young and dumb. What? It was great. <laughs> <laughs> young and dumb was great. Young and dumb was great. And then, like I say, it's my first. So certain sex things I did sexually and stuff was new. It was fresh. I was open. Fair enough. It was open. <laughs> so oh. with. What age did you guys decide to get married? Um, so he was very like, I want to have a kid. And in mm -hmm. my head, I'm very like by the book. So I did not want to be anybody's baby mother. So decided, oh, we're going to get married first mm -hmm. before we have a kid. Like, I need to make sure that I'm taken care of before we before add anybody in. I want to I want my own space I need I need this to be done before we could do this and that's what we did so got married at 27 turned in 28 mm -hmm. and then once we got married it was like everything hit me all at once in a negative way. In a negative way because being with somebody that's older than you and having like real ass, real life, real ass problems and mm -hmm. you're still in this mindset where you have to, I feel like I aged myself. Like I had to, to mature faster to, to deal even. with certain things that I could have gave myself a little more time for. Ooh. Like I didn't have to learn all this right, right away. At the moment. No, I could have still been, but I didn't realize that until I heard that. So my story, so I guess as quick as fucking possible. Um, I was thirteen when I met him, and he was extremely tall, had tattoos. I lived in the south. I just came from the south, so I'm not used to seeing tattoos on a dude. So that got my attention. Ain't like Trey Songs. Then, not now. <laughs> then, not now. Anyway. You don't like Trey Songs right now? No, mm -hmm. he's a rapist. <laughs> Call a spade a spade. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, um, we, so we met at, th I was 13. Uh, he was 14. Uh, he left the school 10th grade year. I didn't see him again until after I graduated high school. We talked a little bit. Like, we were, like, fake best friends, but not best friends. Yeah. Like, he had a girlfriend. I had a boyfriend. But we would still talk about being together. We was fucking horrible. Anyway, so I broke up with mine. He broke up with his. And we decided to start dating. So we started dating when we were 21. Um, We had our first child when we were 23. I was 23. He was 23. He was turning 24. Anyway, 
Um, we got married when I turned 25. We broke up right before I turned 27. Like we we made it to the year mark, mm -hmm. but that was a forced date. Yeah. Like we went out to celebrate, but it was forced because yeah. I didn't want to go. I was still mad at him. He was like, we got to make it work. And I was like, mm, I don't like you. <laughs> uh, but we broke up officially right before I turned 27. Like mm -hmm. I moved out, packed up, yeah. left. Couldn't do it no more. 27. Um, divorced. Woo! Um, let's drop that real quick. <laughs> divorced, done, never happening again. We're good. It's in the past. It's done. He died. Anyway. Um <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can laugh about it now. <laughs> I passed it. I can laugh about it. It's funny to me now. I'm dying. Um, okay. What was your last straw? I know my last straw. What was your last straw? Um what, what not the... to make it a damper moment, but <laughs> my father passed. My dog. And um in my mind, I had a realization moment, like, because my father was always my safety net. Mm -hmm. And then once he passed, I had a real moment to sit with myself. And I was just like, I don't really have a man to, like, really right. take care of like, me. Like, he's like he was, no matter if I was married or not, yeah, mine. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> So once he passed, I was just like, he can't even, do, I don't have anybody who really got me and I'm married. That's scary. Ugh. That's real scary. But that was like, okay, you got two options. Get your shit together. <laughs> be either going to get it together or I'm out. Because if I'm going to be by myself. I'm gonna really be by myself. That's kind of that's that's kind of what mine was. Yeah, mine was like I'm doing it all by myself because we were living with his mom. Mm -hmm. She moved, so we took over her apartment, and it was fine because I was like, I got it. Like we, I know, mm -hmm. the, I understand the rent, I understand the bills. Um, <clears throat> I I like to decorate, so like I redecorated the house. Like I was all in, mm -hmm. but I was the only one working. So he would take care of the baby. I would do the working. And I was fine with that because at least we had that. Somebody was home with the baby. Fine. Mm -hmm. But once it got to a point where it was like, I'm staying at work till 1 a.m. Just to make sure we have extra money. And then I'm being accused of doing other things. And I'm like, just call me. I'm right here. Like, I'm in the shop. This is yeah. this is where I'm at. I'm, mm -hmm. I worked at a hair salon. Like, I'm in the shop. It's, I don't go but here and home and here and home and mm -hmm. here and home. Um, when he did get a job, it was like, oh, I didn't get paid this much. It's like, wow. like, this is not like, cause he used to do that shit and he used to work mm -hmm. in the rides. So he's like, yeah. oh, I didn't get paid that much. And he's like, all right, mm -hmm. I get that. It's like off the books. But for this, this is on record, bro. Like you, you can't just not get and get yeah. and not get. And it would be half on this. So I'll pay on half on that. And I'm just like, yo. I cannot take care of you and me and him and this. Yeah. This is a lot. That's a lot. I can't. So you got to take a bill. Yeah. So. And then you can't pay half of that. You've got to mm -hmm. actually pay the bill. Yeah. And it wasn't, it just wasn't doing it. And I knew he was cheating. Because mm -hmm. what, <laughs> this is bad funny. I didn't tell too many people this story. Mm -hmm. So I went to the bathroom. I had to pee. I went to the bathroom. His phone was in the bathroom. And it was open. Like mm -hmm. it was unlocked. So mm -hmm. I just looked through the whole shit and I seen everybody mm -hmm. she was talking to. Everybody. Mm -hmm. Including the woman he's with now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God. Like, what do I, like, what do you do? Exactly. I've never seen it in person. This is why I don't do phones. This is why I don't check phones now. Because I didn't know what to do then and I got my brain not screwed right. I fucking kill you now. <laughs> so I knew that he was cheating and I put the phone back so mm -hmm. I had it the same way that it was. I put it back the way it was. Mm -hmm. He like, boom, 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 boom. Like the fucking cops. But I mean, banging on the door. Mm -hmm. So I opened the door like, what? It was just to get his phone. And that's when I was like, oh. Yeah. All right. This nigga's serious. Mm -hmm. um, and he would like go out more, hang out more. And I thought it was weird. 
Didn't think nothing of it. My last, last, last straw was like, he came home. He wanted to talk. It was like three in the morning. I'm like, dude, I gotta get up for like six. Mm -hmm. I gotta go to work. I cannot do this. Mm -hmm. And he tossed up all my stuff. Like out the drawer, out the closet. Everything I owned was in that hallway. And you know the house, so the hallway is long. Exactly. Everything I owned was in that hallway. And I was like, I'm out of here. The crazy part about it is my coworker told me to pretend that I was packing. Mm -hmm. She said, pretend that you're packing. Scare him. Pretend that you're packing. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to do that. No. As I'm packing, like fake putting my stuff together, I was like, I'm getting the fuck out of this house. <laughs> I'm not fucking staying here. Fucking you packing. cheating on me. I'm paying all the fucking bills and you got the nerve to throw my shit on the floor. Ow. I'm getting the fuck out of here. Me, my kid be going. Mm -hmm. And I packed up my shit. And I that next you. Tuesday, it happened on a Saturday. That Tuesday, I had a van. And I got all my shit out that apartment. Everything I fucking paid for was on that truck. Mm. I left him with nothing. I'm not playing. Give, give me my shit. And I was done. And that was the end for me. <laughs> no, <I laughs> that was you. my that was my end. Because I was already going through like, I don't know how to be a wife. I've never seen it. Um, my parents are married, but like I see it when I have to. Like my every so yeah. often I visit. But I don't know what, a, what it is to be a wife. I, he doesn't know what it is to be a husband. We're still treating this thing as if we're girlfriend and boyfriend. Exactly. And my only thing is, I didn't ask anybody about help. I didn't ask anybody what it is to be a wife. I didn't ask. I just was like, this is bullshit. Like, what the fuck is this? Exactly. And everybody's like, oh, the first year is hard. And I'm like, this, no. is, this is hard. Like, I am dying. Yeah. Like, going to a shop, doing hair all day till 1 in the morning, 2 in the morning. Like, that's not normal. Yeah. Not for me, at least. No. And I was doing it so often to the point where I was just like, I cannot do this. Yeah. This shit is horrible. I couldn't go out. I would go out. I would get called down. Oh, the baby wants you to come home because you can't go to sleep. And I'd be like, yeah, you same, do it. Same thing for me. It was just too much. But that fake packing turned into real packing. Mm -hmm. That fake, it was so, because I was not leaving. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. I was like, you know what? It's an argument. It's fine. We're fine. So I didn't pack it up. And you started thinking. And I was like, I'm not doing this shit no more. Like, I'm picking up my stuff. I, no. <laughs> I was like, that's it. I'm done. And I re and I didn't want to move back in with my parents, but I was like, I will live on the street. I'm gonna fuck where I go. Mm -hmm. I'm not staying here. I'm done. So that was my mm -hmm. that was my end all be all. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys have a moment where you thought it was fixable after their last straw? Um. So we had conversations. We had several conversations, but I think, like honestly, he was just trying to buy time. So my my last request was we go to therapy. We go to therapy or it's just done. So I was already in therapy for a year. And then we decided to do couples therapy. But couples therapy really didn't last long. It was literally we did three sessions. And then every time we had a session, we would argue worse. I just feel like he wasn't open to, and a lot of men, I'm grateful that men are open to therapy now right. because a lot of men are not open to therapy. A lot of black people really weren't open to therapy like that. Like they did not think fixing their mental health was a priority. Um, a lot of black men don't find outlets where they can go and really deal with their mental health. Mm -hmm. They don't have those spaces. So I was trying to create that space where we could really fix what was going on with us. But he negated the whole thing. Like he tried, and I think he only tried to buy time to see if we could just push this under the rug. Okay. But this exactly. problem was so big, could not push it under the rug. It was not fitting under the rug. Like it needed to be dealt with because we had too many problems. We just literally were not the same people anymore. The person that he met when, when I was 22 is not the person that I was when I was 30. Completely a different person. And once I got into therapy, my whole outlook 
changed on life, especially after I lost my father. So he was not dealing with the same person anymore. And I think he really could not deal with who I was at that moment. So he was done with therapy. And once he told me he was done with therapy, I was done. So because that was my deal breaker. If we can't fix it, if I'm literally telling you this is what I need in this relationship to progress. And you're looking at me like, yeah, that sounds like a you problem. We tried to fix it. It's weird. So I was, I was, I was on a, I want to say like six month, hell no brigade. Like he would try, we would talk, we would text, he would come to my job. And it would always be to talk about getting together. And I was like, no. Simple. No. You like, I miss you. You said I miss you. I was a bitch. I'm not gonna lie. I was horrible. But I couldn't I didn't want to I knew he was talking to somebody because we already see the phone. So I felt like go be with that person. Like why are you chasing that three? Go be with that person. So around Christmas that same year, um I had so I had to Moved my son down south because he was also being an asshole. Didn't want to take care of him. So I had to do what I had to do. So I had to send him down south. So my mom could at least help me while I got my shit together. So I brought my son back up here for Christmas. And we had a a huge, like, this is probably the biggest conversation we've had since the breakup. Where he cried. I cried. We talked about going to therapy. We talked about having another child. We talked about just getting our shit back together and fixing everything. And I was like, well, if we're going to do that, we're going to go to therapy. He was like, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go. And I'm like, all right. That's something he was not mm-hmm. with. So he said he would go. And I was fine with it. The next day, that's how fucking true it is. The next day, he gets a call. I was leaving to go home. JJ was spending a night with him. I was going home. He gets a call. And I don't know what the call was. I leave. I get a call from him. He is flipping out on the phone with me. Come and get him. You got to get him. And I'm like, get who? He's like, Jay, you got to come and get him. Like, I I can't take him. And I'm like, what the hell is he doing? I left. He was chilling. As I'm walking back, he tells me not to come anymore. He's like, if you come get him, I'm going to call the cops. So now I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay. If I walk through that door. And it's locked and you don't let me in. I'm kicking this shit down. Because what are you doing to him? Mm-hmm. So I go in the house. That By the time I get to the door, the door is cracked open. So I was like, okay, my threat was a little something. Mm-hmm. It did something. It meant something. <laughs> <laughs> it meant something. Hmm. So I open the door and my child is fully dressed. Mm-hmm. She just don't have on sneakers. So I'm like, all right. So I'm pissed. I'm like, you know, let me just pack his stuff. We're going to go back to my parents. I'm off this already this is a fucking hell no like it yeah. already started he just yeah. had a beautiful conversation the day before whatever i'm putting on my son's shoes his phone is losing it it's going off it's going off it's ringing it's ringing it's ringing and i see the name and i recognize the name from the netflix on tv and i'm like what the fuck exactly but he's still losing his mind it's like he's crying he's like hitting himself in the head he's sliding on the walls i'm like what the fuck is going on what happened not sliding on yo <laughs> sliding on walls i'm like what the fuck happened so he's we leaving he goes he hug our child oh don't let nobody take you from me we're going to be best friends forever and i'm like in my head i'm still like what the fuck happened like what happened i never brought it up again um Time to send my son back down south. I send him back down south. I go zero contact with him, basically. We're barely talking. Mm-hmm. Uh, he sent me a happy Valentine's Day. I sent it back to him. Two days later, about 4 a.m., I got a text that he was having a baby. Four in the morning. Text me. And was telling me that he he knows that our child would be happy with being a big brother to his little sister. So I was like, well, so she, like, you already know a gender. So she I found out pregnant. I found out years later that she was pregnant, pregnant around that time that I was there. She was also there. So she knew I was there. She knew I was staying there for that time period. Um, yeah. So 
I got deal breakers. My deal breaker is once you have a baby on me, you you don't exist. You're practically dead. And it sounds harsh, but I would never do it. So for you to do it, yeah. Um. So I felt like all of those conversations, all of the crying, all that shit meant nothing because all in all, while you were chasing me, you was doing you. So that was my, like, all right, we tried to fix it, mm-hmm. but it didn't last gotcha. for 24 hours. <laughs> it didn't last for 24 hours. You regret <laughs> getting married, yes or no? No. And I say no because I've learned so much. I've learned so much about men. I've learned so much about myself. Things that, and it's always because dating now, starting to date now, you kind of see things that you didn't see when you were in your 20s. And I've grown so much. I understand so much. I feel like I'm a stronger person because of it. Mm -hmm. And I can deal with certain personalities and dynamics and and be able to move within that better than I did. And then also I was able to get to ther- get into therapy mm-hmm. and thank God for therapy because Who the I'm a strong Who the hell knows? But, <laughs> like, I don't know. If you'd have asked me two years ago, I'd have said, Hell motherfucking no. I regret it. It was the worst thing that ever happened to me. Now now. Thank God for therapy. Now. Heal, heal Koya. Yeah. Heal Koya. Therapy Koya. Thought it out. Fuck it through Koya. It's like, no. Because, one, I would have never known what it was to be a wife to begin with. Mm-hmm. Like, I have, have an idea of it now. Mm-hmm. Um, And then I wouldn't have been able to... I don't know. Like, something about that was just like, that made me grow up. Yeah. Because I was very young-minded. I was very like, we're fine. Cupcakes and rainbows. After that, I was like, I don't got time for the bullshit. What happened? Which one? Yeah. What? So I think it, it made me grow up. I, I'm half and half. Because <laughs> it's like I regret it because I'm like I should. I knew I shouldn't have done it. Yeah, yeah. I, knew, I, I, like, feel I, I feel that. I feel that. Yeah, I feel the same way. I knew that it was too and like many it was things. like you know better, but you I did it anyway. She warned me not to. Her and my other cousin, <laughs> they told me not to do it. That's one. And I knew I'd, I never changed my last name. I never changed my last name. I, I used to get asked all the time. Like, are you going to go? Are you going to go to DV? Are you going to change your last name? I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it this week. I would never do it. Something kept telling me don't not do to it. do it. Something kept saying, no, don't do it. Don't do it. No, don't do it. Then I would say I would go do it, and I'm like, I don't want to go. Exactly. So I knew, like, I knew I wasn't supposed to do it. Something was just like, it felt good in the moment, but it like... It went long quick, term. It, it like quickly was yeah. like this is not it. No. This is not gonna do it. No. We're not gonna we're not gonna last. Yeah. And yeah, like I, I've I've learned stuff. Like I, I know what it's like to be with somebody that actually loves you. I know what it feels like now to to know when the shit's over. Yeah. Let it be over. Yeah. Um so I'm still I'm more so I still regret it. Heels Coy is still regrets it. I, I, I just, admit that. Because I got such a great learning experience out of it. I don't know. Like, I know I shouldn't have did it. And I know that I should have let it go way before I even said I do. I Probably should have even took the ring. But what I know, what I understand now, it's like, a, it's like half and half. Because I know better now. So I yeah. know I don't have to go through that again. Like yeah, I, don't I don't have to. I know what not I, to do. I don't have to be like some people are in situations and they, they repeat stuck. it. Yes, and it goes and it's like you've been in with the you've been in abusive situations with the same situation, different, different face, different, different face, face, different, different face. face. Yeah, I know I don't have to go through that anymore. Like I, like that's my experience, my only experience, and that's it. Here's the thing: if this is like the no and the yes, I'm I'm still. <laughs> I still, I still have a human. <laughs> I get the one. I feel you. I feel you. I feel, like, yeah, you. I I got feel you. Cause you know what? What I learned in therapy, accountability, and I had to own my own shit and the decisions that I, I made. Own my shit. I know what I did. Yeah. I, I, I know what I did wrong. I, I went to learn that because I wasn't trying to hold that L. I was just like, no, but 
he, but then it's like, but why did you allow him? And then it was just like, but I had to learn all that when I, so it's like, I get it. I, I, I feel you, I but it's like, it. yeah. I still regret it. Um, because I didn't like, I did like criticism at that moment. So I couldn't own anything ah. at that at that point in time. Nobody could tell. At that moment when I was with him, nobody could tell me shit. Yeah, no. That was same. Yeah, nobody same. could tell me shit. You couldn't tell me shit. What? He's doing what? So? And what? <laughs> it was like. I got him. And what? <laughs> was, I support my man. And what? It was crazy. It was, and was like. This is not going to work. No. <laughs> I can't do it. And then it was like. Wait a minute. And then I had to go back to those same people. And I was just like. You were right. You know what? Yeah. Mm. I, yeah. 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 <laughs> Because I, I ride for Mars. I'm sorry. Listen to me. I can't stand a nigga now. At that time, I rode for Mars. You can't tell me shit about, shit about him. So, you I, I, tell me I feel you. I got you. I got Do you. you... Is this something that you wish that you knew then that you know now as far as marriage? Because hmm. my, my thing would have been, when they told me no, you, sh- you, sh- you should have listened. No. So, <laughs> me... I was an extreme people pleaser. I was an extreme people pleaser. Mm-hmm. And I cannot take people being mad at me. Same. Uh, I was just trying to. I could not. I couldn't deal with it. And then the way I did not know how to communicate. Whether, with, when it comes yeah. to conflict, I did not know how to communicate. I did not know how to advocate for down. myself. I shut down. I go to my sister and my cousin. Like They call it the bubble. Yeah, bubble, I go in the bubble, I shut stay down. In the bubble. That's it. And it was no communication and I couldn't go back. I could not advocate for myself. So really, like I said, thank God for therapy because once I went into therapy and I started understanding how to voice my opinions and really talk. talk, talk effectively, because it's one thing you talk, you talk, you talk, talk effectively, effectively. Yeah. girl. So... That's the one. If I knew how to do that before I got myself into all of this, I really felt like things would have been differently. Because, yeah. and it was like across the board, family, friends, relationships. I did not know how to communicate with people. And I would wait thing, wait for things to just boom. And that was, that and was then the everybody issue. looked at me up. crazy. Yeah, and it always blow up. And then when you're the quiet one and you blow up, they're like, what the hell's wrong with you? Exactly. So, yeah, I if I did, if I've known anything now, it would be that I couldn't communicate for any. Like, I just was like, you know, it's fine. I got it. It's fine. I'll fix it. Shut it down. And then when it did blow over, it was like, you could have talked about this two months ago. And it probably would have been solved two months ago. But neither one of us knew how to talk to each other. Exactly. We weren't in a space or we weren't around people that even communicated with us. Exactly. So it was impossible for us to try to fix that at that time. And it was just... Yeah. Yeah. It, it wasn't going to... Mm. We ain't not talk. I ain't not talk. For sure, know. for no, sure. Not effectively at all. I knew how to scream and yell. I knew how to do that. But I will only do that when it got to the boiling point. It was never like... We gonna talk about it surface level. We gonna fix it. I would wait until they got to the point of it's boiling over. It's spilling all over the place, and now I don't have no other outlet but to yell. Yeah, yeah, it, it, that, yeah. I probably would have if we could have communicated better. It probably would have left out smoother than it did. Yeah, because I'm not saying me communicating would have saved yeah, it. Would have saved the relationship, but, but it would have eased it out. Yes. Where it was like we are both on this mutual thing. It probably where we would know, have ended sooner. Yeah, we probably wouldn't even got to that point of exactly. marriage if we would have known how to talk at that time. Because exactly. I was pussy, and I was just like, okay, sure, whatever, whatever you want to do, do what you want. How is how is dating now for you, or then and then now? <sighs> dating, dating at first it was scary because. Dating in 2022, dating in 2023 is scary. I'm used to seeing somebody in person, having an instant connection, a vibe, and going from there. Nowadays, everybody has behind a phone or a profile. So getting to know somebody behind there and then meeting them 
gives me a little more anxiety than I, I that I expect. Yeah, because it's not an initial connection. I only will date you if I met you already. And see that. <laughs> If I've known you beforehand, and, that, you, and you know what? Because I'm a single mother, it's just like I have more time to online date than yeah, I do to actually go out. Like my baby's four, so she needs her mom more. So I have to balance my time to like actually have a social life. So in the beginning, it was fun. Um... It gets a little stressful from there, here and there, because you never know who you're gonna meet, and um, there's always my cousin likes to call it the representative. So you always meet the representative first, right, so you know you the, you, the, real the real person. So you exactly. But that happens in face to face too, because they they start off as like the the amazing person, yes. and like a little bit long lunch, be like, who the fuck? Who is that? This? Who's that? And the thing that I learned from my marriage is that I got to be myself. Like, because I wasn't being myself because I was yeah. such a people pleaser that I wasn't allowed to really be my authentic self. So being my authentic self and then meeting these representatives, it's like, it's like a mind fuck a little bit. Because if I'm being myself, why aren't you why being you yourself? It? Why well, are you pretending? Not... But it's easier when you're online dating. Ugh. But I've had my but I've had my fun. Yeah, the horse. I have plenty of horse. I want to hear one. Okay, my biggest, and I think this is where I was like I was in like a little bit of transition because I kind of met somebody. That was kind of similar to my. I got love bombed. I didn't know I was being. I didn't know I fell into another love bomb situation until like it went left. So um, I met him. I met him on Bumble. So I met him on Bumble. <laughs> I met him on Bumble. He was an airport mechanic. Um, he was very attentive. He called me a lot. Um, Automatically, like, wanted to meet me off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, we decided that we were going bike riding at Rockaway Beach. Right? Love stuff like that. It's very, cute. very hearts and flowers type of girl. Very hearts and flowers type of girl. You could do, like, and I would think it's the cutest thing, and of I would course, love you forever. Because nobody does that stuff anymore, you right? Yeah. So, went bike riding at Rockaway Beach. Um... Date went really smooth, really smooth. A lot of hand holding, talking, got the energy from the waves and stuff like that. It was a really nice day. Um, we go, we, he takes me back home. Now, um, prior to us meeting, you know, he um, he speeded up the date. We were supposed to have the date on Sunday. It said it was on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So, because he sped up the date, I wasn't really ready. So, I had to, like, rush everything. So, I guess he caught that energy and that vibe from me. But he took that as, I didn't want to see him. But we didn't let that spoil. We didn't let it spoil the date, right? Um, so, he drives me home. I gave him a kiss. Now, I don't always kiss everybody on the first date, but the energy was there, so I kissed him by, right? It got a little too heavy, so I stopped it because with online dating, there's a perception. Some people, they have sex on the first encounter. Some people have sex as soon as they match. It's okay. like, it's a, it's a expect because it's online dating. Like, right. Like a lot of people are out there just to like, just to have a good time and to see who could be the quickest way. But you got to be like really intentional about like who you're meeting. And that's why I talk about the representative because you may think he's there for a long time, but he really might just be here for a good time. So I don't. AKA, I, I don't want to. <laughs> so, Nothing about this seems fun. And that, you know what? <laughs> it, it's, 
it's fun in the beginning, but sometimes it's like when you get serious and you get intentional, then it might, this is when it becomes a headache because you, you catch it more frogs than princes. Ew. Yeah. So I gave him a kiss. I stopped it because it was getting a little too heavy. Um, so I told him to call me when he got home. And then I left out. I got out the car. No longer I hit my door. I get a phone call. And he's cursing me out. That's how you leave the car? You just ran and you left the car? You didn't even want to call me? You didn't even want to call me while I was driving home? I'm like, that's a girlfriend. That's a girlfriend. Um... Thingy. I'm not your girlfriend. Like, we just went on a first date. He's like, oh, but I was nice to you. I was so nice to you. Um, I did all this stuff just so I can see you. Like, and now I'm thinking, I was laughing at first because I thought it was a joke. Like, ha, 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 why you playing? He was dead serious. He was, well, you broke his heart. he was angry. You broke his heart. But it was just like this level of expectation and it was just like, it's a first. I just met you. I just met you. Like I just average. met you and turn and turn what was supposed to be the nicest date, and I thought I went on like the nicest date to like the worst date because he legit like cursed me out because he didn't like the way I left the car. Kissed him. I'm trying to figure out where you fucked up at. That's what I'm saying. And I swear to God, I called. I called my friend. I called. I called our cousin. And I'm just like, yo, am I tripping? Like, what did I do? Did I do something? Why is he this mad? Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it either. And like I said, he went through this whole thing about how much he did for me. How much he treated, how well he treated me, and how he felt like he deserved more. And he didn't get sassy that. Ass. He didn't get that. It's a lot of sassy men sassy out there. Ass. <laughs> sassy. Very upset. Like, he was very upset. Sassy. He was very upset with me. He was very upset with me. That makes no sense. All right. He was very upset. I've had men who literally. Try to manipulate me into giving them money. Well, that's that's easy. Niggas is niggas is stupid. <laughs> like, like I don't think I don't know what the fuck you doing. Like scam. Try to scam me out of money. Just yeah, it's kind of dangerous. Yeah, but you know what's so crazy? Be safe out there, ladies. You know what's crazy? Remember, remember what was his what was his name? The scammer dude. They had a Netflix show about him. Oh, oh, oh my God! What the, the fuck? I know who you talking about. I know you talking about. I can't Damn. his name. What was it? It wasn't. He wasn't on. Um, he wasn't on Snapchat. He wasn't. He can't, he he made it on Instagram, but then they banned him. I can't remember his name to Damn. save my life. But he used a dating app, and he was scamming bitches. The Tinder swindler. Yeah, Tinder swindler. <laughs> The Tinder Swindler. The Tinder he used Swindler. The Tinder Swindler. I would never. I can't. They've I done see it. Myself. I They've need to see that. you. They've done that. I need to see you. They've done that. So that's why it's 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 beastly because I understand like people have met their loves on on yeah. the, I, the TikTok yeah. girlies say it all the time. They they met their love on Hinge and they met their love on Bumble and they and they met their love on all these dating apps and it, it happens instantly for them but then it's like the majority of women they out here struggling because of the type of people they're meeting because I, I can't my head can't even fathom I'll punch a nigga in the throat <laughs> I'll find you and I'll punch you in the mouth because it's always and then you get like some people it's just like you tr truly try to find what their intentions are but some people out here just really try to play with you and it's just like for what so um after after i got divorced well not next technically divorced left the relationship started dating i met one person 
Mm. And I'm stupid because I didn't continuously date people. I stuck with that one person. Oh. So I dated that person for like four and a half years. Mm-hmm. So now I'm dating, mm. which is weird. And I don't like it. Why? Because dick is a weird... Okay. <laughs> so I don't have like dating apps, but there's still Instagram. Yes. Those things still exist. Yes. And Instagram is probably more unhinged than dating apps mm. because they are underneath your comments they're in your inbox you know now you could like react to stuff yeah so recently <laughs> recently my stomach is growling hungry shut up <laughs> um recently this guy don't know who he is random hit up and he was like hey how are you and i'm like i'm fine hi mm-hmm. try to be nice he was like, it was probably like maybe 11 o'clock at night. He's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm watching TV. He's like, oh, I wish I was laying next to you watching TV. And I'm like. Don't you hate when they say shit like get that? get the fuck out of here. And or like, you know the weird ones? Like, oh, you took a shower without me? Oh, God. Yes. Ick. It's the ick. It's the So ick. I'm like. And they don't even know you, but you they want to lay they want to be laying next to you, cuddling you, right? The next time somebody do that, I'm be like, yeah, and then I'm gonna get a fake gun and I'm gonna fucking rob you. <laughs> I'm gonna rob you. Cause y'all are just so open to linking somebody. You know what I got to rob exactly. you. I literally, kill you. Literally 7 30. Dumb. <laughs> just fucking stupid cause you open because I got a pretty picture, you dumbass. It's probably filtered. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'm, I'm like, oh, okay. Um, I don't even know you. So, he's like, what if I what if I was laying next to you and you felt me? And I was like, we wouldn't be laying next to each other because I don't know you. I don't even know your name. So, he tells me his name. And I'm like, okay. Still don't know you. Still don't know shit about you. <laughs> but thanks for the information. So, he decides to write a small paragraph of the things that he would do to you. To me. After he sent me my picture back. So <laughs> he sends me my picture back and he goes, um, he sends this little paragraph of all the things he would do. So my response was, did you just send me my picture back? Like, did you just send that back to me? He's like, yeah, because I needed you to see what I was referencing. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> then he goes, he says, I get like this this thing, goes bing. I look at it, it's a video. And on Instagram, you have the option to like, it's like either a hidden video or like you can, it just pops up. Pops up. It popped up. Whole penis. Why? Why would you, I don't want, I don't want that. <laughs> I was like, okay, we're gonna calmly respond. You responded? I calmly responded. I said, let me say something to you. I don't know who the fuck you normally talk to, but you don't know me. I don't know you. I don't know shit about you. You don't know shit about me. I should know what your dick look like already. <laughs> you have a good night. <laughs> he was like, oh, I'm sorry for disrespecting you. You right. I'm so sorry. Good night. Get the fuck. And he was cute, so it fucked up. <laughs> It was like, oh, he's he's handsome. Okay. Once you here's the thing. I need y'all to hear something. When you send a dick pic or a dick video, our thoughts don't be, ooh, ooh it's a dick. It's ick. It's like it's ick. Who the fuck else you sent that to? Because that can't be new. You can't no, just do that. No, no. You didn't just do that. No. That's... So how many bitches got this video? Because that's picture? your best video. <laughs> that's your best one. That's the top tier. That's the one that was like, that's it right there. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> we don't think like that. We don't go in mad excited about the fact that you sit on a dick. I don't want to see that shit. If I ask you, that's different. Fine. I'm not going to ask you, so it don't even make any sense. But don't just send me your dick. I don't. Don't do that's that. That's wild. Someone did it before. I was like, they was like, oh, I want to send you something. I was like, don't send no. me your dick. I'm oh. not even joking with you. Is don't it, send me your dick. Isn't it wild that we got PTSD from that I shit? Don't that do that. <laughs> I was like, don't do it. <laughs> Nigga says it anyway. It was like, it's up to you if you open it. <laughs> Bitch, what? <laughs> Yo, 
<laughs> don't send me your Please. dick. I don't want to see if I see it in person. Cool. Like if we we or, get to that point, and if we get to the point where it's like, all right, there's dick. Cool. On I the see top it. five things we do not want to see. I don't is want not to see. Dick. I don't want to see your nut videos. <laughs> I don't want to see your dick. I don't want to. Do- not at all. Don't do it to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, Shigoya, scarred. For life. I don't want to see it. Please don't do it. Oh. <laughs> I got PTSD all over here. I fucking hate it. <laughs> don't. Oh. oh my God. You had <laughs> You had one. I had one. And it was little legit like. And like I said, I was telling you. You know, you get so many different people trying to match with you on dating sites. So, oh my God. And this is the thing, like, I don't know, because I felt for some reason Bumble was working for me at one point. So, I matched with this guy. He's a health coach. He lives out in Long Island. Beautiful house. All these things, right? Right? So... He's telling me, he tells me what he does for a living. We're, we're chilling. He's at home. I'm at home. He was just, he kept complimenting me on my beauty. So then he's like, I want to send you something. It's two photos and that a video. Right there would have been a no <laughs> But me, I'm just like, sometimes I can be a little naive. I'm like, go with it, right? So bad idea, bad idea. That don't go, don't, to me. don't go, don't, don't. And then the thing is, this is still like this is not this year. This is, I'm still in my first few months oh, of God. just dating, so I'm getting them brunt. I got two two pictures and one video. So the first picture, it's him in his bathroom, regular shirtless selfie. Pretty standard for guys taking pictures, right? Yeah. Right? I got a few of those. <laughs> so then the second picture is him in his room, full body. His ass is naked. Now, but it wasn't all like up close. It was like from, from afar, afar. From afar. So nasty. I'm like, okay, it, you shouldn't have did it. But... The curiosity in me was like, what is this third thing? What is this third thing that you about to send me? And I'm embarrassed for saying I watched the whole thing. I'm so, but I watched it. And it's literally him jerking off and then to completion, not all sorry. And then right under it. I did this while looking at your picture. He got blocked. Ah! He did get blocked. He ah! did get blocked. He did get blocked because, and then I had to delete it because I'm like, I have a child, and she goes through my phone. She goes through my phone. So what the fuck am I supposed to do? But why? like, why? 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 Like a month in, that's different. It's not even a month. It was literally. Talking for a week. It was well, a mine week. Well, mine for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it was a week. Well, here's the it thing. It was a week. They do it because someone said it was okay. Said it was cool. Someone whom they already had sex with had gotten that and was like, "I want it," and then they proceeded. So. They do it to whomever is going, you know, they're going to, I get it, I get it. My question is, how do you determine that the person that you're talking to at that moment is the right person to send this to? They don't. Because that's why. Everybody gets this community penis. Everybody gets the same video. Everybody gets the same picture. I don't want community. But that's what it is. <laughs> they don't determine. There is no conversation of who should get the dick, who shouldn't. It's, I like her. I'm going to send this. And <laughs> we'll see what happens. And usually, and I'm, I'm not a dude, but I'm, I feel like they have to get a high success rate because they keep doing it. Okay. 
So I have a question, mm -hmm. which is how, like, what do you tell somebody who wants to get married? Like, how do, what do you, what is your advice to them? Like, how would you know? Well, I feel like as an individual, you should know if you're really ready to get married. But if you're questioning it, if you're seeking validation from other people, should I really be getting married to him? Then you should not be getting married to him because nobody should be able to answer that question but you and your significant other. Because what I learned is when you involve other people in your relationship, it's only going to get worse. Marriage and relationship. Relationships, period. You, you add people in it, it turns into a whirlwind of shit that it don't need to be. Because everybody's opinion really does not matter, but mm -hmm. yours and your significant other. So if you are questioning if you should really, then you have no business. The only person that should let you know that you're ready to get married is you and your significant other. If y'all made that decision together to do it, everybody going to have doubts because right. it's a big it's a decision. Big step, it's yeah. a big decision. And it's not just you anymore. Some people especially if have been single for such a long time, they don't know how to be a us. They just yes. know how to, to be, be a them. Just, just by just themselves. Me. Just me, just me, just me. So if you don't know how to be a us and you have been practicing on us, you're going to have a hard time. So you should be, it should be like a, a working machine. You should know how to move together in a space. If you don't know how to move in that, it should come with some, not a, not full ease, but you should be able to slide into it pretty well because you already found your rhythm. Mm -hmm. It should say, it should be an easy yes. Yes. Without the question It mark. shouldn't give you anxiety. Yes. To be together in that way. Would you do it again? Yes <laughs> and no. Yes and no. It's just that what I know now and what I would expect is different. It's different because I've dealt with the brunt of a lot of things that I really shouldn't have. So what I expect and what I would need, it's the same question if somebody asked me because I only have one kid, would I have another kid again? And it's just like, no. Well, see, she's four. She's four, but you know what? I'm good. Mine is double digits. <laughs> it, my my whole thing is, if he was four, I would think about it more. I would go, okay, maybe it's a possibility. I probably have a higher yes. It's about to be ten. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. My advice is, don't do it. Why? I don't like the. Okay, I don't want to say don't do it because it is going to discourage people from not getting married. If you are not willing to go through a divorce process, don't do it. Divorce is so much worse than getting married. It takes three seconds to get married. It costs us damn near a year long. and some change, if not more, depending on whatever you got going on in that marriage, whatever you got to split up. It takes longer to get divorced, and it costs more money. It's like a death. It's unnecessary shit. I, like the divorce part of the whole thing drove me nuts. I that's the only reason why I wouldn't do it. You got to be a special kind of person to make me want to get married, to make me want to have another kid. You damn near got to be Jesus for me to do it. Like I don't mind being a girlfriend. That sounds fucking nuts, but because I've been there, done that. Hmm. Is it like more of a just scarred from the whole situation or it's just like... I'm not scarred from being just, married. I'm scarred from divorce. Divorce. Like, if we... Here's the thing. The only way to have a successful divorce is if you guys know for a fact what If it you, was mutual. Yeah, like it's a mutual thing. You both know what you want. You know what you're splitting up. Makes your shit easy. When people are being vindictive or trying to be funny or... I don't know. It's the divorce part for me. Like, it's just... It was just a lot of unnecessary shit for no reason. So, I just wouldn't do it unless I know you're going to be in this for the long run or you die. And then it's... That's I got it. you. Divorce was not 
it no, divorce me. is not. It's not it's a death. It's literally a death that you gotta mourn, that you gotta go through. Yeah. And then, like I said, if it's nasty, if, if he be so nasty. Once and they, it's nasty, it's, it's that's, it's, that's it's, it. And then they usually say the true personality of a out. person comes out when you're going through a divorce, and nobody has spoke truer words than, than that. that. Woo, shit. It's terrible. So that that'd be my advice. I got you. That's me. Don't you don't gotta listen to me, but that's just my opinion on it. But be sure. That's the Yeah, be a hundred percent sure. With yourself, don't ask somebody else. You be sure. Be sure. Okay, so that is it for our episode. Thank you for coming. I had so much fun. I did too. I hope that you took what we said and don't Put it onto your own stuff. No. Just, just listen, take the advice, and go forth with it. <laughs> Until next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.